Welcome to the tutorial Inverse Kinematic Basics, the first tutorial in the Inverse Kinematic series. So rather than get into the mechanics of setting up or animating with the Inverse Kinematic tools, what I'm going to do in this tutorial is discuss the theory behind Inverse Kinematics. So to begin, when you work with cutout animation, most of the time you're going to be using the Transform tool to animate, otherwise known as the Forward Kinematics tool. The inverse kinematics tool is just an assistance tool. So some people get that confused. They think that inverse kinematics is a style of animation, like traditional animation where you hand draw or cut out animation, what we're doing here today. So just to reiterate, you won't use it all the time to animate. You're really going to use the transform tool to do this, but the inverse kinematic assists with animating um, using the cutout style. So with the transform tool, you can rotate, scale, move, skew. Um, however, with the inverse kinematics tool, you would use it for more complex motions, such as sitting or bending at the knees. Something where the feet, for example, would be locked, but you want everything else to move in relation to this locked position. So you'll do a lot of rotation and translation, but not much of anything else. Um, with the transform tool, so let's go back into that mode. I don't know if you remember, but you really work in terms of um, a parent-to-child hierarchy, and you really move single or individual pieces. So for example, I could rotate the arm, and then if I wanted to rotate just the forearm, I would have to rotate it as an individual piece by itself, and the same with the hand. Like that, as individual pieces. However, with the inverse kinematics tool, once I start moving the hand, you'll notice that everything else moves in relation to the hand. The upper arm and the forearm aren't stiff while I move the hand. Everything moves sort of in a natural flow along with the hand. So obviously, we're not looking at these as individual pieces from parent to child. We're looking at child to parent, but as a chain where one movement affects the movement of everything else in that chain. So if you've done 3D before, you know how to create a skeleton using sort of a bone rigging system such as this. However, in Animate or Animate Pro, uh, the skeleton is created for you. It won't come out looking as perfect as it is seen here. Um, you do have to do some modifications, which I will get to in one of the following tutorials, but it's not something that you have to create from scratch. And the way the skeleton works is it makes connections out of pivot points. So all these large white dots that you see here, we can even zoom in to look at them, are actually the pivot points um, you know, that rotate at the shoulder, at the neck, at the elbow, at the wrists, etc. So the inverse kinematics does not work with basic rigs. It only really works with the hierarchy rig and the mixed rig. So I don't know if you remember what the difference is between those rigs from previous tutorials, but a hierarchy rig is, is what we have here. It's pretty complex. Everything is connected to everything else. Um, and so it's everything is in a hierarchy, in other words. Um, a basic rig is when everything is sort of floating around as individual pieces. So you would actually just move an arm somewhere and then move its forearm and then move its hand and set every pose up as you animate. So with that type of a rig, in, you would see it in the network view, nothing is connected. You'd also see it in the timeline view in terms of the hierarchy. There would be none of these arrows that create steps they create that kind of hierarchy. Everything would be at the same level. So with that type of a basic rig, the inverse kinematics tool would not work. However, a mixed rig where there are partial parts that are not connected, but there are partial parts that do exist in a hierarchy, you can still use the inverse kinematics tool. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the tool properties for the inverse kinematics tool. Obviously, you need to have the inverse kinematics tool selected from the tools toolbar. So do that first to bring up its properties in the properties panel. Um, and from now on, I might refer to inverse kinematics as IK as it is a bit simpler and easier to use. So in this first series of icons, you have the modes. The first mode being 
the bone selection mode. So when you have this on, you can select bones in the camera view. And then you can move it like that. Um, you don't necessarily need to click on a bone to select it, like I said, because moving the foot also moves the thigh. Um, direct selection is not uh, paramount in any way. So let's undo that. Otherwise, if you have this deselected, the only way for you to select a specific bone, it would be through either the timeline or if you have Animate Pro through the network view. So you'd have to select the actual foot layer or the actual neck module in order to be able to uh, make any type of adjustments. So the next mode you have is the simple chain mode. Well, this is the different types of chains that you can have. So there's simple, direct chain, and all chain mode. So simple chain mode, which is set by default, allows movement from the child that you select all the way up a simple chain. So in this case, it's to the first intersection, which would be at the hip here. So you can move the shin and the thigh with the foot, but not any of the rest of the body. If I then selected direct chain mode, it would allow you to move everything up to a major intersection, um, such as at the lower body in this case. For example, if I grab this foot here, now you can move both legs because they're both connected at the hip, and that's where that separation occurs. Then if you pick the last mode in the list, the all chain mode, it allows you to move the entire body from one child. So if I do, oh, so if I select the foot, oh, it's making me move the whole thing. So as you can see, you're moving the whole body. Um, if I had something nailed down like this foot, and then I grabbed this other foot bone, then it would stay in place, but everything would move in relation to the movement of this foot. Um, and I'll talk more about nails later. So let's return this back to simple chain mode. So the next button in the list is the IK manipulation mode, and this is the main tool that you'll be using to either pose or animate um, your character when using IK. If you're using Windows, you can hold down the control key and click on a bone to select it directly. Um, if you're using Mac, you could use command click to select a bone directly in the camera view with the IK manipulation mode selected. So the next button on the list is the Apply IK Constraints mode, and you would use this when you want to um, adjust a moving object that you don't want to move over a range of keyframes. Um, we haven't gotten into it yet, but what you're going to do to keep certain body parts in place is nail them down. However, they're only nailed down for a keyframe cell. Um, any interpolation that occurs between the two keyframes doesn't guarantee that that body part stays in place. So the IK constraint mode is used to make sure that all those interpolated drawings also keep um, the nailed down body part in place. The next button on the list is the edit minimum maximum angle mode. And this button only exists for Animate Pro. So if you're using Animate, you probably don't see it um, in the tool properties panel. Uh, what this does is sometimes you want to restrict uh, the amount of rotation that any body part can do. So you can choose an, a minimum and maximum angle so that as you're animating quickly you don't have to worry about precisely hitting that max every time or going past that max or going past that minimum. So it kind of keeps um, invisible boundaries set up for you for the rotation of certain body parts. The last button on the list is the bone editing mode and we're going to use this in the next tutorial when we set up the skeleton. As you're setting up the skeleton there will be bones that are at weird angles. They won't be laid out perfectly on your character like this and you'll be able to use the bone editing mode to rotate the bones into place so that they are overlaid properly on your character. So the next section we have are the options section and there are only two options. There's the keyframe button and the Ease Shape drop-down menu. So the keyframe button is used often with the Apply IK Constraint mode. Um, it allows you to keyframe a range. Um, and you would see that range, or that range would appear in this field beside. So if you're keyframing um, a movement, on that first keyframe, you can choose the easing so that by the time the 
computer generates um, drawings between the first and second, it won't do it in a mechanical manner. It'll use the easing parameter that you've set. Um, and it has not only what the curve looks like if you're a more visual person, um, but also listed beside the type of cur curve it is, so fast ease in, um, you know, slow ease in, etc. If you would like to make an adjustment, so say you chose some type of curve and then later on you decided um, after the fact that you would like to change the ease in shape, what you could do is go to one of the keyframes, uh, change the shape, and then make a small movement and that curve will update. So it's best to select the ease shape prior to making the movement, but you can always do it afterwards. So the next set of buttons we have are the selection. The first one being the enable translation if top of hierarchy button. Um, and you usually use this on the bone that represents the master peg. So I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in here on the Karate Rabbit. We're going to get into this later, but the bone that represents the master peg is actually this one that's sort of hanging obscenely down between the rabbit's legs. And we know this because it has this plus sign, which we actually were able to denote on the bone by using the enable translation of top of hierarchy button. Um, and what that means is if you grab that bone, you're going to be able to move the entire character left or right or up and down, basically anywhere on the screen. In other words, you'll be able to make a translation of the entire character. So the next button in the list is the enable rotation button, and it's always on by default, which obviously allows any selected body part um, and its corresponding chain to rotate. Um, if you select a certain bone and then disable this button, what it does is it removes the pivot point of that bone uh, the bone remains and then the bone becomes stiff so you'll be able to rotate everything around that bone uh, but not that bone specifically and that can be useful in certain instances. The next button that you have on the list is the exclude from IK button um, and we're going to use this in the next video. You'll see that you might have too many bones um, that the software automatically generated for you for your skeleton um, and that's because we have many, many pegs and many, many um, patches. And so we have things just beyond the drawing layer um, for one body part. So one body part is never just one body part. Um, and the way that the software renders the skeleton is it's rendering a bone for every layer or every module in your network view. Um, and so you're going to use this exclude from IK button to remove certain bones that are redundant for your skeleton. And once again, you'll see that in the next video. For the next row of buttons we have are the nails. Um, and IK is based on the principle of nailing or sticking one part into place and then having everything else jiggle and wobble and sway and move around um, in relation to that stiffened body part. And you do this by applying nails to the pivot points of whatever body part or multiple body parts you want. And the nails are temporary. I mean, you can put a nail, make a movement, and then remove a nail and continue animating and it won't mess up any of the previous animating you've done. Um, unlike when you use a transform tool and you move the permanent pivot, that'll completely screw up everything you've done prior to that in terms of animation. So these are temporary, which is good to know. The first one is the most generally used nail, so it's just called nail, and it locks the bone into place in terms of the X, Y, and Z axis. And you can do that by clicking on a pivot point while holding down shift. So like that and it turns red. So you know that a nail is there. So you would have to have actually had this selected when you placed your nail down so it knows. Or I think you can do it after the fact as well. Um, so the second button in the list is the hold orientation nail. So that allows the nail to keep you from making any type of rotation. The next one is the hold X position, so it won't allow you to go move along the X axis, but you can rotate and move up and down. Um, the next one is the hold Y position, which allows you to um, go across from left to right and rotate but not move up and down. I mean, you can tell because the arrow here is darker for the X axis, and here the arrow is darker for the Y axis. And the last button in the row is the enable min max angle button and once again this only appears for animate pro users and not for animate users so you won't see this in the tool properties panel 
if you're using Animate, um, and this is used in conjunction with the other Edit Min Max Angle Mode uh, button, and it once again allows you to set a minimum and maximum angle for any rotation for any bone. The last field in the Tool Properties panel is the Stiffness, and what this does is it allows you to set a maximum amount of resistance to the rotation that you will make using the IK. Um, and the maximum value I believe is 1, the minimum value is 0, the most often used production value is 0 0.1. And say for example we wanted this character to flop down in a chair but have its feet nailed in place, we might add some stiffness to the shins for example, so as the entire body flops into a chair, the tibias are a little bit more resistant to just flopping over but might hold part of their place and move more slowly for example. So there are some things you want to resist a completely wobbly IK chain and that's what the stiffness is for. So lastly I'd like to give you a list of a few shortcuts that would be useful when you use the IK tool. Um, control or command depending on whether you're using Windows or Mac um, and then clicking on a bone allows you, allows you to select that bone like that. If you hold Alt while rotating, you're able to rotate a body part without affecting the entire IK chain. If you shift and click on a pivot point, you can add a nail and you can shift and click again to remove that nail. And then if you shift and click on a bone, you can add or remove the hold orientation. So uh, that's this one right here. You can see it stays stiff even though I'm moving the entire leg. So that's it for the tutorial Inverse Kinematic Basics. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, setting up the character to use IK.